All right, guys, welcome back to the Armchair Arm Dragger podcast. I'm Ben Hersick, your host, and this is episode two. I'm going to try and get a little bit ahead of the ball. It's currently Friday when I'm recording this, so hopefully I can have it out before Money in the Bank, which would be very nice. Um, I'm going to try and get all the little things out of the way right away here. Um, follow me on Twitter at Churro Solider, C-H-U-R-R-O-S-O-L-I-D-E-R. Uh, follow, you can follow this podcast now on Twitter at podcast armchair, all one word, no underscores, which is very exciting. Um, if you guys didn't know, I write stuff for all things combat. All things combat is a website that covers mixed martial arts, boxing, and pro wrestling. Um, recent, this whole week I've been doing how WWE should have booked money in the bank, how WWE could have booked other money in the banks. I did an NXT money in the bank, NXT women's money in the bank, cruiserweight money in the bank. And tag team money in the bank. I am very tired. I've been doing those. I try to get them all done as quick as possible. Um, I've been signing them in the day they're supposed to go up. So sorry about that, Josh. For those who don't know, Josh is the guy that runs the website. Um, he he's the one who covers the MMA and boxing sides mostly. There's a lot of boxing companies, if that's the right term. He talks about those a lot, um, and he covers MMA. Usually, we cover UFC. We started to cover more Bellator. And I know we've done Risen. If we've done more, he'll just yell at me on Twitter about it. I don't know. <laughs> um, so, let me think here. Twitters. Uh, if you have a question about the podcast or just about something in general, the, D- the direct messages are open. Um, you can always just tweet me about something, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can with work, school, and everything else in between. I'll, I'll try and be as active on Twitter as possible with... All three accounts that I help work with. Um, what else? What else? Uh, that's really it that I can think of. Um, as always, I'm just here to talk about pro wrestling for hopefully less than an hour and a half this time. Um, I'll be t- doing predictions for Money in the Bank on this episode. Uh, we'll also have a quick Best of the Super Juniors catch-up. We will have... We'll talk Double or Nothing a little bit. And also... AEW getting the TV deal and what this could mean going forward. Um, but the meat and potatoes of this is going to be the Money in the Brain predictions. Uh, real quick, uh, these next three weeks are going to be prediction heavy. Uh, Money in the Bank is this Sunday, uh, May 19th. You have Double or Nothing, May 25th. All Elite Wrestling's first pay-per-view as All Elite Wrestling. I don't count all in. I don't know how people feel about that, but that's how I'm going to run with it. Um... And then the week after that, on June 1st, you have TakeOver 25, or TakeOver Connecticut, TakeOver Bridgeport, TakeOver, we had to think of a city at the last minute. I would have loved to have seen it in Cleveland, personally, Hunter. Come on, man. Step it up. Um, so, real quick, let's get into the best of the Super Juniors uh, updates. Uh, it's There's been four nights of action so far, um, just as a quick catch-up. Currently leading A Block at four points are Shingo Takagi, Taiji Ishimori, and Tiger Mask. Following them at two points are Marty Skrull, Dragon Lee, Titan, and Jonathan Gresham. And rounding out A block at zero points are Sho, Takamichinoku, and Yoshinobu Kanemaru. I will say this, Sho looks like a star. He's wrestled uh, Taiji Ishimori and uh, Dragon Lee so far. Dragon Lee and him almost went to the time limit. It went 27 minutes, roughly, I want to say. He has looked amazing. This He is going to be the future of the junior heavyweight division. Hopefully the junior heavyweight division. As I said last time, he is a huge, huge junior heavyweight. I would love to see him possibly in a G1. Not this year, maybe two or three years from now. Uh, I think Osprey is going to be in this year's G1, which is going to be a lot of fun to watch. Uh, so maybe he could open the gates to like, oh, hey, these junior heavyweights are also good. I don't think we're going to see the likes of Marty Skrull... Uh, Ishimori, Dragon Lee, the bigger heavy, the bigger junior heavyweights like Shingo Takagi and Sho, maybe, but not the smaller ones. Um, so far, Ishimori, uh, not I- yeah, Ishimori and Takagi are in the driver's seats. Uh, their next two matches, Ishimori has Titan and Takamichinoku, two very winnable matches. Titan could be an upset waiting. I'm not really sure about that. Uh, Ishimori just isn't a good matchup for Titan. And then Shingo Takagi has... Where is Shingo? Yoshinobu Kanemaru and Marty Skrull. 
I think Ishimori has a has an easier road right now. Ishimori could be sitting at eight the next time we talk, which would put him two away from the the total you usually would have to advance. Usually you get ten, you are a lock to advance out. You you think usually. Um, I need Scarlett and Lee to pick it up, man. They got to start winning some of these matches. Um, B block, you have leading the way at four points. Will Ospreay, El Fantasmo, Robbie Eagles, and Rasuke Taguchi. Uh, just behind them at two points are Yo and Dahuki. Still don't know if I'm saying that right. I'm just bad with names. Uh, and behind them at zero are Bandito, Bushi, Ren Narita, and Rocky Romero. Bushi at zero points makes sense to me. Rocky Romero, he had a tough draw for the first two nights, I believe. You know, he had Osprey on night four. Night two, Romero had Eagles. Yeah, he had a tough draw at the beginning. Uh, Bushi had Osprey. No, yeah, Bushi had Osprey and El Fantasmo. Again, tough draws. Uh, Renderita's Renderita. He's not going to get a lot of points, if any points. I'm still very tempted to say he can beat Bushi on night 14. That is very tempting. Um, and then uh, Bandito's the surprise to me. Yeah, the first night he had El Fantasma, which you didn't think he'd win. I thought he had a good shot against Yo, to be fair. I thought he would beat Yo. I, I was wrong, but that's how you are at wrestling. Sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong. Oh, well. Um, it, It's looking like it's going to be between Osprey and Fantasmo. It Fantasmo's make or break match for the block is going to be him versus Eagles on night whenever that is. Actually, maybe night six. I'm just reading these, reading over my notes real quick. Yeah, night six is going to be who from Bullet Club is going to be challenging Chaos as Will Ospreay. I I still don't see Ospreay losing the block, to be honest. There, uh, he is too talented. He's too big of a name to not have in the finals. Phantasmo and Eagles are working on it. Phantasmo's closer than Eagles to being a big name. He's huge in Britain, and Eagles is good, but he's not <laughs> Ospreay good yet. Phantasmo could be, to be fair. Um, but still, there's plenty of wrestling. There's still a lot of nights. I'm going to do math live, which is a great idea. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Still ten nights of action. Um, we'll probably, we'll have an update again next week before going into the all, the all elite wrestling double or nothing picks or predictions and explaining them. Um, but speaking of all elite wrestling, seamless transition. <laughs> The, the announcement of them going to TNT seemed like a done deal. Well, them going to Turner was a done deal pretty much for two months. It was the second worst kept secret of pro wrestling this year, aside from the announcement of All Elite Wrestling. Uh, but you look at it, it, it's a very, very interesting deal. Ted Turner, I, I've said this to people before, Ted Turner gets one more shot at a wrestling promotion, which is nice to see before... He retires and he goes and does whatever retired former television company owners do. Probably yacht racing. I don't know. Um, see all the wrestling end up on TNT was nice. Seeing it on TBS would have been weird considering TNT does do a lot more live action, well, live action stuff. There's a lot of more sports stuff. You see a lot of NBA on there, which is going to be interesting come uh, NBA season and specifically and specific, specifically the uh, NBA Finals time, or well, playoffs in general, to be fair. A lot of those games are shown on TNT, so is there going to be a scheduling conflict? I'm pretty sure they'll be willing to work around it. They'll, they'll kind of have to, now that you think about it, because TNT is not ESPN, or ESPN can just get the rights to NBA in general, and TNT's just a stick in the mud now at that point. Um, are they going to challenge WWE right away? I can see it. But mainly, I'm not saying it's going to be challenging WWE because it's going to be a lot better than WWE. For the most part, WWE is good. The biggest issue WWE has, to me at least, is Raw. SmackDown is usually consistent. Is usually good. It's at least consistently good. Last week was meh, to say the least, but that's because there's a, a big lack of wrestling and there's a big uh, focus on the storylines of the go-home show. Uh, Raw was a lot better, I thought, than previous weeks. Uh, I'm very happy for Sammy. Uh, more on that in a little bit. Um, but it, it's mainly going to be a big challenger for WWE because it's that shiny new thing that people have wanted to see, and now they get to see it. But the the big question I have still 
when is the release date? We got a time frame. We were told fall. We didn't get an exact date yet. So when are we going to see it come onto our TV screens? Is it going to be after the Fox deal is done and SmackDown moves to Fridays, which opens up Tuesday through Thursday for them to have, for All Elite Wrestling to have their weekly show? Which, if I had to pick, Tuesday would be a good one. I would think Wednesday would be better, though. Middle of the week, you get Raw on Monday, you get a day to digest that. All Elite Wrestling on two, on Wednesday, you get a week, a day, a day, a day. let's start that over. You get Raw on Monday, you give it a day to digest. You get All Elite Wrestling on Wednesday, give that a day to digest, and then you have SmackDown on Friday, and you get the whole weekend for that to digest. Unless there's, you know, uh, what you call it, a takeover or a pay-per-view. The only issue with All Elite Wrestling being on Wednesdays would be it would interfere with NXT, which people want to see. I mean, to be fair, NXT is on demand, and you can watch it whenever. Um, I could honestly, it, it's a tough choice. I, I would think they would lean towards Tuesday. Because Tuesdays it's a Tuesday. Tuesday is not much going on. If you have an NBA game, okay. Thursday you wouldn't conflict with Thursday night football. Tuesday you're not gonna have football. Tuesday your big competitor is gonna be basketball and baseball, sports wise. I don't know reality TV that much or so sitcoms, soap operas, all that mumbo jumbo. I don't know much about that. So I can't say how that would be in effect. But I think Tuesday is what they're going to go for. I've heard the name Tuesday Night Dynamite thrown around. I would enjoy, I would like that. Um, although, if it's the Tuesday Night Delight, you have to get John Morrison, Johnny Nitro, Johnny Impact, whatever his name is nowadays. I've lost count at this point. What was his name in all in uh, Lucha Underground? Johnny, Johnny Underground? Johnny Lucha? Johnny something stupid? I don't even remember. Um... It, it'll be interesting, and to be fair, I look at the, their roster. Yes, there are big names on it. You have all of the former members of Bullet Club. You have Pac. You have uh, SoCal on Censor. And Helico is a, just signed. That is my most anticipated signing. I want to see and Helico thrive in wrestling. And All Elite Wrestling is a good place to, uh, yeah, a good place for that to start. I still can't speak. I have been doing this for a week. I should know how to speak. Um... But the only drawback is it's TNT. It's not like an NBC and ABC. It's not one of the big uh, four, ne three networks you always get. Four. You, you always see people have ABC, well, at least in America. I don't know about the UK or Europe or anything else like that. I, have, I, sh I should know more before I say stuff. But um, you have, in America, you get four core channels that are always local. Uh, ABC, NBC... Fox and CBS, you always get those four. The numbers vary. You usually once in a while, like we have Fox Eight in Cleveland. Uh, I could imagine there's a Fox Eight in like Colorado somewhere or Denver. That's Colorado still. Uh, Washington maybe. I don't know. Um, I will say it, it is an exciting time to be a wrestling fan, and people are saying if. With All Elite Wrestling, this could make the WWE product better. There's one problem in WWE. There's a big problem. Uh, and I'll get into that in a minute. Um, and this actually does feed into Money in the Bank a little bit with one of my predictions. Um, I want to at least touch on the Sasha Banks topic. So Sasha Banks, as most of you probably know, has not shown up since WrestleMania to a Monday Night Raw to at least be, be there backstage or something. The the big issue with this to me isn't Sasha not showing up. It's Bailey showing up consistently. She's Bailey is somebody who's always there. She's always at the shows. Um even when she's not being used. I remember at one of the shows it was the one where they advertised the six woman tag that got moved to just a tag team match with Ember and Carmella against Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. Uh Bailey was there. She had Instagram stories with Carmella. That's looking too deep into the point, the point maybe, but it's something that a lot of people do. Uh, you look at it, Bailey being there does not help Sasha's case. This makes Sasha look very immature. And I know one of my one of my uh, good friends on Twitter, uh, Chrissy, 
is, is a big Sasha Banks fan and a big Bailey fan, but it's it's my opinion, to be fair. I, I think Sasha is great. She's amazing in the ring. She's a wonderful talent. Uh, same with Bailey, but Bailey being there hurts Sasha's case. It's Sasha saying, I'm not treated right, when Bailey, who has arguably been treated worse, Bailey's had one women's title reign for what? Two, three months? And yeah, Sasha's had four reigns as the five reigns as the raw yeah, five reigns as the raw women's champion. And they've not been very long reigns, I'll give her that. The tag team title reign wasn't as long as it probably should have been. But it's it's not the principle of the matter, it's just something that I think is a big issue. When your tag team partner and somebody who also agreed that you guys shouldn't lose a title so early is still showing up, that's the problem. And I know, I know Sasha's doing her own thing right now. It, it could be she's pulling the rug over everybody's eyes and it's just a huge, huge work where she's on vacation or she's just re recovering from some small injuries or something. If that's the case, I will laugh if that happens. Same with the, the whole uh, Booker T, Corey Graves Twitter feud that turned out to be nothing and just two friends having fun. That was really funny when it turned out, oh yeah, we were just pranking everybody. If this is just a huge elaborate uh, a jab from Sasha Banks, that would be very, very funny to me. Um, but still, it's it's interesting to see too, and everyone's saying, oh, she's going to go to All Elite Wrestling. That's already a stacked women's division. You have B Priestley, you have Britt Baker, you have Kylie Ray. You have Nyla Rose. You have a whole bunch of other ones I'm probably forgetting. They're all very talented women's wrestlers. And Sasha Banks being there is just another name at this point. They don't need more names in all elite wrestling. They already have a stacked roster. And to be fair, WWE does too. You have Lashley, who is a former Impact Everything champion. He won all the titles at once in Impact. You have Andrade, who's from, from Mexico, who's part of the founding stable of Los Ingobernables, the same stable that fixed Tetsuya Naito's uh, biggest issues in wrestling. You have all these great talents, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, Kofi Kingston. It took them 12 years to get Kofi right. 12 years. You have all these talented guys, Drew McIntyre, Ricochet, Alistair Black, Buddy Murphy, Cedric Alexander, Tony Nese, all these guys who are so, so, so good. And yet they're just, there they don't do anything and this is why people give me beef for liking apollo cruz i still say to this day apollo cruz is one of the most talented wrestlers in the world he might be a top 35 talent guy but he's on these rosters with stacked names and it's the same people the same boys and girls getting the same pushes you get roman reigns getting world title shots and championship matches just handed to him uh I, I hate saying this one, but Seth Rollins is always in the main event picture. To be fair, he's really damn good, and that's why. Same with Roman. Same with AJ Styles. AJ is so damn good, it's tough to say he's not going to be in the main event picture. When he does and has like a feud with, like say, Kevin Owens that they had for the U.S. title two years ago at this point, um, it's good matches, but it's always just like, this should be higher. This should be for a bigger title. It shouldn't be mid-card, and yet it is. Because you want to push those other guys. That was during the beginning of the Nakamura push to the main event. And Vince had him lose at WrestleMania. I still don't get that, to be fair. Um, you have all this talent. And it's the same people getting the same shots. The men's roster is starting to look a little better. You had Brian win the title back. And now Kofi has the championship, which is a nice change of pace. Seth Rollins is finally Universal Champion after Brock Lesnar held it for 86,000 years, it felt like, and showed up three times a year, more or less. Um, and you have the likes of Andrade getting a push. Finn Balor is looking more and more uh, main event level guy. You're getting all these guys ready for the main event. And on SmackDown, that's really good because of the fact that you have, yes, Roman Reigns, but you have a great talent of wrestling. Raw, I've said this for years. Raw is the sports entertainment show. SmackDown is for the wrestlers. And that could not be further from the truth. Look at SmackDown's roster and tell me who is a bad pro wrestler on there. Okay, maybe besides 
Liv Morgan because she's still relatively new to this. That's why. You give Liv more time to develop, she's only going to get better. And she's in a great situation to be with the SmackDown Women's Division. I still say Becky Lynch is on Raw, but to be in the locker room with the likes of Charlotte, Bailey, uh, Ember Moon, Mickey James, hell, even Carmella, who is a former champion and has improved greatly since then. You have guys who are in good situations, but when you give the same pushes to the same guys, it's always Roman Reigns in the main event, and it's always Charlotte Flair is the face of the women's division. It gets annoying, and you're like, what do I have to do to get a chance here? There's a reason the women's division was so bad during the Trish Stratus and Lita, Trish Stratus and Lita era. Be- that was because you had just those two women winning championship after championship. Sure, once in a while, like Jazz or uh, Molly Holly or Victoria would come along, but nine times out of ten, it was Trish or Lita with that title. It just got to the point where it's like, enough is enough. And when Mickey James came in, that's when it was like, okay, yeah, this is enough. And then the women's division was bad for a lot longer, and then it was good again. And now it's finally great. It's fantastic. You look at the women's, the women's division on Raw, SmackDown, NXT, NXT UK, especially the NXTs, the women's division is thriving. Sasha Banks can be a part of that, but you have to give her something in return. Is it a long Raw women's title reign? Is it a long SmackDown women's title reign? Is it something that sets up a match that I have that could happen at Money in the Bank? Let's see. As now I've seamlessly transitioned into Money in the Bank. Um, it's very tempting to just sing the uh, theme song that ha- they've had for the past eight years for the event. Or Shane McMahon's intro, or uh, theme song. But I'm not going to do that. Partially because I can't sing for the life of me. Um, so you have 11 matches on this card. There is a nice little point I will get to here after the pre-show match. As of right now, there is only one pre-show match that has been announced. That is, as of time of recording, it is Friday at 425. So they still haven't announced that there's going to be two or three. Um, the pre-show match is the Usos versus Daniel Bryan and Rowan. People are complaining this is a SmackDown tag team title match. The SmackDown tag titles are not on the line. Last I checked. I'm going to check again right, right now just to prove that point. Let's see here. Money in the Bank. Matches. That's references. Matches. Daniel Bryan and Rowan versus the Usos. Tag team match. It does not say tag team titles. Very important to, fig- to look at that. Those are words. Um, This is going to be good. Uh, Rowan gets a lot of flack and a lot of, uh, a lot of, not hate, but disapproval thrown his way because he's not a true wrestler. Uh, in a tag team, he's really good. He can work his part because he, you have to have the heater part of the tag team. The guy who's just going to be in there and wear somebody down. And yes, Brian can do that. But when you have a guy as big as Rowan, it's going to be Rowan that does that. And he's going to be the one that gets tagged in. So when the Usos get their hot tag, you have the one Uso just running down somebody. It's going to be Rowan. Brian's too big of a name to get run down. Well, maybe not run down, but he's too big of a name for the Usos to pin. The Usos would pin Rowan. The Usos would not pin the likes of Daniel Bryan or somebody else. But in, in this type of match, especially when the titles are not on the line, how do you go against Bryan and Rowan? Simply because they just won the titles. I don't think they're going to want their champions to lose the match so early. Um, lose a match so early in their reign. These two are very good. These two teams are going to be fantastic. It's going to be a good pre-show match. Usually I don't get excited for the pre-show outside of WrestleMania. I'm excited for this pre-show. This one's going to be fun. Um, I still, like I said, I have Brian versus Brian and Rowan winning. Um, very, very excited for it. And I can't wait to see actually what moves the Usos are going to try and pull out to make the pre-show even more enjoyable. It's a shame they're on the pre-show. They're so good. But, you know, as of right now, who is not on the pre-show? The Cruiserweight Championship match. Cedric Alexander couldn't get off the pre-show, which was annoying, except for Australia. Buddy Murphy got off the pre-show for Survivor Series. Tony Nese versus Arian Aria Davari 
got it off the pre-show. Great job to those two. The rivalry's been a little interesting. Um, it feels like this is essentially a holdover for Mike Kanellis to eventually take the title from Nice. Um, and again, then, say, say Nice beats Davari, uh, the, the other big heel, really, in 205 Live that I can think of without looking at the roster right now, it's Drew Gulak. And Nice versus Gulak would be nice. I want Gulak to win the championship at some point. Um, but against Nice in this early in his reign, how do you go against him? Nice has looked good. He's looked great. Hell, his match at WrestleMania might have been one of the top three matches. You'd have Brian versus Kofi, which actually was a really damn good match. It wasn't just hype. Uh, you had Becky, Charlotte, and Ronda, which was actually very good. Although it was way too damn late in the night. Or in the morning at that point, it was like midnight. Um, Nice and uh, Buddy Murphy are on there. Um, I'm trying to remember the WrestleMania card now. That might, be, that might have been my top three matches. Joe Mysterio was a minute, which is actually the next one I want to get into. Um, Raw tag was pre-show. That was actually a decent match. The SmackDown tag was one. Okay, I'm I'm diverging way too off topic here. Um, I think Nice is going to retain simply because it's so early in his reign. Why would you have him win the title just to drop it to Davari of all people? You want to build up Tony Nice to be somebody big and somebody important, just so that way. I really think Canellis is going to be the one to take it from him, just so that way when Canellis does, it's like saying, "I'm the big bad heel." I'm going to beat the face that you guys love, and there's nothing that can stop me. And then insert, who probably would be is being built to be the next face of 205 Live, or the next face of that brand for a long time, Umberto Carli- Carlillo. Carlillo? I'm going to say it's Carrillo. It's C-A-R-R-I-L-L-O. This guy's a lot of fun to watch. I usually have watched this stuff as Ultimo Ninja. When he was in um, various uh, Mexican promotions, he is very good. He is very fun. He's very high fly, which is good for the show. Uh, and I think his future is very bright on 205 Live. I think he's somebody who could stay on 205 Live. He's not going to be a guy who goes to the main roster, kind of like how Cedric and Buddy Murphy have. Speaking of which, can they please be on weekly TV? It would be nice to see them. Um I think he could be a big buildup, but that would have to be after Canales takes the belt off of Nice. Uh, that that might be a while. Nice has looked great as champion. I think he was a fantastic choice to take the belt off of Buddy Murphy. Not just because the two were former friends, but you had the question at some point. Buddy Murphy has run through all of the faces of 205 Live, aside from Akira Tozawa and the members of Lucha House Party. Because I was not ready to be champion again yet. Lucha House Party is Lucha House Party. Great wrestlers, party gimmick doesn't scream champion. Which is what people have a lot of issues with Kofi. More on Kofi later. But with Tony Nese, he's somebody who's probably going to have a decent reign with the championship. Could be SummerSlam that we see it end. I think, but Arian Davari, Aria, Aria, there's no N. Aria Davari is going to be a, a interesting opponent. Um... He's the brother of Arian Navari, which is why I keep saying Arian, who was around for a while in WWE. And to see that uh, this Davari is getting a lot more chances than the other Davari ever had is kind of funny to me. But it's nice to see. It's nice to see a change of pace in WWE. And 205 Live now, under the control of Hunter, has looked great for the past year and a half. And I'm very excited to see where it goes. I think it could be a very, very good future for the show. Uh, and Nice will be a guy to watch in the future. Like a- After he does drop the Cruiserweight title, where does he go next? Does he go to try and get the title back? Does he move to Raw or SmackDown? Does he go away for just a little bit so that way they can continue to build up Canellis and then he's like the hero that returns to the show to stop Canellis' reign of terror? Who knows at this point? Uh, it's all speculation. Uh, so the first one that we know for a fact will be on the main show. The United States Championship match was Samoa Joe defending against Rey Mysterio. I am very torn. When I first started watching wrestling, I was maybe eight or nine, 
my dad had fallen asleep on the couch. I grabbed the remote. We had on like New Mexico State versus UTEP in college football for whatever reason. I uh, just like was flipping two channels. I got to channel 55, which was one of the local channels. Uh, it was CW, actually. And on was a guy, a small guy in a mask, attached to a stretcher. And the stretcher got hit next to the ring post by this huge guy. And I was like, what the hell is this? This is weird. I like this. That was Rey Mysterio getting beat up by Big Show. Fast forward to now. I'm now to 2019. I'm 22 years old. I'm talking about pro wrestling. I'm writing about pro wrestling. I'm. It's a weird life I've had about pro wrestling. Um. So Ray has been one of my guys since day one. Uh, Samoa Joe is somebody I have loved for years. So it's it's tough. It's very tough. I I've gone with Samoa Joe simply because Raw needs a big bad heel. Right now, they don't have that, which is a shame because with the talent you have on Raw, wild card rule or not, I hate saying wild card rule, but regardless of the talent you have on Raw, there's nobody that screams, I'm the major heel. I'm the bad guy, while the Universal Champion, Seth Rollins, is the good guy. You hate me, you love him. Essentially, that's Baron Corbin, and nobody cares about Baron Corbin. But I look at this, it could be a good match for Joe. These two need time. I feel like at WrestleMania, they were going to have a good match. They were going to have a decent amount of time. Ray got hurt. Plans changed. Minute squash. Could Dominic play into effect? Maybe. I don't want him to, but he could. But the story of the match is going to be, Ray has never won the U.S. title, WWE or WCW. Can he finally get the job done? Can he win the one title that has eluded him his entire pro wrestling career. But it's still a relatively early reign for Joe. I don't really see who could take the title off him other than Mysterio. They'd have to start building somebody up. Cesaro's a name, maybe. Uh, Cedric Alexander. Maybe Mojo Raleigh. <laughs> Please, God, no Mojo. The Raw mid-card division is so bad. It's weird, because like you look at the show's Raw, you have great main event picture, bad mid card, bad women's division, great tag division, SmackDown. Okay main event division, it's a blurred line there. Great mid card division, again, blurred line. Fantastic women's division, horrible tag team division. You have like five teams. What the hell are you doing? Um, but with with this match, it's it's gotta be Joe. It's gotta be. They're, they've built him up to be this big, bad monster. There's no way they're going to have him drop the title of Rey Mysterio that quickly. If anything, this feud could go a little longer. I'd like to see a little more Joe Mysterio story. And then maybe a big match at the next pay-per-view, whatever it's called. The one after Saudi Arabia. I'm not even going to talk about Saudi Arabia that much. Um, But yeah, I think Joe retains simply because of the fact that he's just won the title uh, somewhat. Recently, it was February, before Fastlane, when he won it, and now we're in May. It's been three months, but the amount of times the United States title has changed hands in the past two years, it's changed hand, not hands nine times. Please, let, let somebody have a decent-sized reign, and let that person be Samoa Joe. Now for The Miz versus Shane McMahon. The I should reiterate, he is the best professional wrestler in the world, Shane McMahon. McMahon. You have no idea how much that pisses me off every time I say it. I cannot stand Shane McMahon anymore. Shane McMahon, here's a fun stat. Shane McMahon has wrestled at every single pay-per-view this year. Three of those matches of the four pay-per-views so far. So there have been four pay-per-views, yeah. Three of those matches have been pretty good. It was the tag title match with Miz at Royal Rumble against The Bar. Um... The tag title match with Miz, defending the titles against the Usos at Elimination Chamber. There was the turn at Fastlane, and then his win at WrestleMania. I cannot reiterate how much Miz should have won at Mania. End the story, Shane McMahon goes away for a little bit. Let him enjoy backstage life. Although, if you believe reports, Shane has very little going on backstage right now. It's the whole reason he came back. He wanted more. He was going to get more, and now he doesn't have it. But 
This is inside a steel cage. It, it screams Miz win. It screams Miz win. Miz needs this. Miz has always been the guy that has been there. He's been consistent. He's been good. And he has nothing to show for it. He should have been the one. I feel like, say, say Brian wins the WWE title like he did in a heel turn. And then Miz is the one who turns face with Shane. Stays on SmackDown. Uh, him and Shane had that false kind of newer match at Mania. Street fight. No hold bar, whatever it was called. There's seven match stipulations that could have worked for it. And say say Miz wins. Face Miz faces Daniel Bryan if Kofi hadn't gotten the huge wave he had gotten. For the WWE Championship, face Miz beats Bryan. You finish that. What? How long was the story? Like 11, 8 years maybe? When I've, it goes from NXT, which is 2010. Nine years. Nine year story with Miz and Daniel Bryan. It would have been a nice ending, but no, we can't have nice things. We're pro wrestling fans. We get the garbage stuff. God, he must hate pro wrestling at some point. Ugh. But yeah, Miz is just going to beat the ever loving hell out of Shane McMahon. Shane's going to jump off the thing or something. I don't know. Shane's stupid. He likes to jump off of tall things. But Miz needs this one more. And I think Miz gets this win, which is going to be nice to see. Roman Reigns versus Elias. Is Roman Reigns versus Elias? Do you really need an explanation? Literally, my article, my, my piece for our predictions article says, let's see. Reigns is a former multi-time world champion, and Elias is, well, Elias. Reigns is winning. That's my insight into this match. I am not invested in this match. I think this is going to be the bathroom break match, to be fair. I think Reigns is going to win. He's just come back. He's still being built up to be the face of the company. And he's he's good. Yes, he's good. It's a shame that Elias is getting used like this again. Elias is so good. He's so talented. And yet, he's just being fed to Roman Reigns for the, what, fourth, fifth, seventeen thousandth time? It's a shame, but hopefully after this, at some point... Elias gets built up and can be somebody big. Maybe he's the one to take the title off of Finn Balor and not Andrade. Although, my, my fantasy booking for that, Finn drops the title to Andrade at SummerSlam. Ali takes the title from uh, Andrade at, I don't know, like Survivor Series or something. Some The, the pay-per-view before, yeah, the pay-per-view before Survivor Series. And then Cedric wins the U.S. title before Survivor Series. And we get Cedric versus Ali at Survivor Series, champion versus champion. Not unification. I can't stress enough how important it is to not unify the titles. But like a champion, the champion versus champion, Raw versus SmackDown, we've seen. Off topic again. Roman Reigns is winning. Roman is winning. And then he's going to go into a promotion, a, a, a feud with Shane McMahon. God, help us, please. Uh, Raw Women's Championship. Becky Lynch. Becky Two Belts. Becky Balboa. Becky, the best thing going about wrestling right now. The man against Lacey Evans. They're not going to put the title on Lacey right away, are they? I, I seriously don't think they can. I don't see the point of it when you have other talented women in the back who have been trying for this for months, for years. Like Natalia, like Naomi, like Sasha Banks, like Bailey, and you put the title on this new blonde, tall, muscular woman, aka Vince's type, which is annoying. We don't want that anymore. We want people like Becky, people who are good. And I've I've said this, and people have agreed with me. Of the four horsewomen, Becky is the worst wrestler of the four, but. Her character is the best, which is what's really helping her. She is so good. And it's, it's a shame she's being put with Lacey, who I don't think should have been called up. She's very green still. That moonsault she hit on uh, uh, Natalia in the number one contenders match hit Natalia in the chest. Moonsault's supposed to hit him in the stomach. That's not how you do a moonsault, Lacey. And I think Lacey can be good. She's had flashes of brilliance in the ring, but she's just not all there yet. And I can't think you want to put a title on her just yet. Plus, of the two titles Becky won, 
She's going to drop the Raw one first. I f- uh, the SmackDown one first, excuse me. She's going to drop the SmackDown one first. That's probably going to be before the Fox deal is uh, uh, begins. Where she'll be on Raw mostly. And the SmackDown Women's Champion will be on SmackDown. I think that's the case at least. I've been wrong on stuff like this before. Um, but Becky retains here. And then the SmackDown Women's Championship match where Becky defends against Charlotte Flair. I'm tired of Charlotte. Everybody's tired of Charlotte getting these chances. We want Charlotte to just stop. Not not stop wrestling, but like stop with the chances. You've had every single championship opportunity this year. Including the Royal Rumble. You had a chance to go win a, a championship opportunity. You lost it. You then lost to... Did she even wrestle Elimination Chamber? No, she didn't. She didn't, no. Um, she then beat Asuka for the SmackDown Women's Championship in a match that nobody thought was going to happen. And they did the Becky Two Belts thing, which which is nice when you think about it, but did Asuka really have to lose? Did Asuka have to lose that match? I didn't want it. I like Asuka. She's been treated so horribly. I can, I've been saying that a lot this podcast. It's a shame, because so many people are. But with the... Uh, ramification, not the ramifications, with the, uh, well, everything going around with, Becky just won the two belts. She just got here. There's no way they're going to pull the trigger and shoot the title back to SmackDown's Charlotte Flair. She, they, they have more merch to sell. They have more Becky two belts shirts to sell. They have more champ champ things to sell. Any other catchy thing Becky Lynch has said over the past six months, they have more of that merch to sell. This is not going to end for a little while. The earliest Becky Two Belts is going to end at SummerSlam. So I expect Becky to win both of her matches. Maybe she taps out Lacey and like catches Charlotte in a roll-up. Which would make it a lot easier for me, personally. Um, but yeah, I see I see Becky retaining both belts. And the champ champ going out to uh, Extreme Rules, I think, is actually the next big review. Maybe it'll be Naomi and Ember Moon getting shots. Or Carmella and Nikki Cross. Speaking of those four women, actually. um, Let's go into the women's money in the bank ladder match. I love these types of matches. You have eight people who can use a little kickstart, I guess, for lack of a better term. They could use something to help them get to that next level. And the money in the bank match is perfect for that. It's the little saying, hey, it's the little thing saying like, hey, we like you. We want to see what you can do as champion. Here's this title. Let's see. There's a reason Edge won at New Year's Revolution and then dropped the title back to John Cena not even a month later. They, they wanted to see what Edge could do as champion. They saw what Edge could do as champion. There's a reason he is a former 12 or 13 time champion. World champion. Not just champion champion. Um... The women's field, though, it's it's a bit of a head case. You have people like Naomi, um, Natalia, all four women from SmackDown, Bailey, uh, Carmella, Ember Moon, and Mandy Rose, that are all nice to see in the match. Originally, you had Alexa Bliss and Dana Brooke, where I was like, why do we have these two? I don't hate Alexa Brooke. Alexa Brooke. I don't hate Alexa Bliss. I don't hate Dana Brooke. I just think there's other women that are more capable and ready for these opportunities. And especially Alexa Bliss's case with the concussion situation. Uh, this is her fourth concussion in under a year. It, it's starting to get to the point where she really should consider just getting out of the ring. The concussions might not be her fault for all I know. I, I can't tell you exactly who's at fault for the first one against Ronda. I kind of put the blame on Ronda since she's a little more greener than Alexa Bliss. But that's neither here nor there right now. But Alexa really does need to think about her longevity and her career. So replacing her with Nikki Cross was nice. It was it was a good move. It was the right move. And I don't mind Dana Brooke being in the match. It's nice to see her get an opportunity finally to show the world what she can do. This was a match that made Lana look good. Lana looked great in this match last year. And now she's not... Really seen. Great. <laughs> I'm just mad Ruby Riot's not in the match. And Sonya Deville for that matter. 
I'm very mad those two are not in there, which makes me think Manny Rose might win. Um, but Ruby Riot and Sonya Deville, it's not just because I did How Did They Get Here for All Things Combat about those two the last two weeks. Those are two of my genuine favorite women's wrestlers right now, and it's a shame that they're not in this match. I would have loved to see Sonya Deville and Ruby Riot get chances, especially because we don't know what Ruby Riot's doing right now. But of the eight women, I can see seven of them feasibly winning the briefcase now. At first, I had six. Okay, five. I didn't have Natalia at first. Now I have seven out of the eight. I, I still can't see Dana Brooke winning this briefcase. I can see Naomi winning the briefcase. I can see Natalia winning it. Uh, Carmella, Bailey, Nikki Cross, Mandy Rose, and Ember Moon. I can see those seven feasibly winning it. The question I have is who needs it more? I don't think the Raw women need it, essentially. And my thinking is they don't want both briefcases on the same show. I think they want to have them separated. Uh, One's going to be on Raw, one's going to be on SmackDown. Of the two, I think the women's is more likely to be on SmackDown. Simply because of the men's field. I think that eliminates all four women from Raw, which is a shame because imagine the freaking chaos Nikki Cross would have. Imagine that. Man, that would be fun to see. Um, so I, in my article, I said, do you go with the former champion, a former money in the bank winner, or one of the young upstarts? You can make a case for all of them. Uh, Carmella is great, but in a crowd of women's division, she needs something to stand out. The money in the bank briefcase could really help her with that. Um, Mandy Rose is, is good. And if you want to build more tension between Sonya and Mandy, where eventually I think Sonya Deville is going to be the one to turn on Mandy. And it's going to be essentially the Becky Lynch thing. Where Becky turned on Charlotte, they wanted Becky to be the heel at first. The fans embraced Becky, and Becky was the face, and Charlotte was the heel. Sonya's going to turn on Mandy, and Mandy's going to be the one they want to be the face, and Sonya's going to be the one they want to be the heel. The fans are going to embrace Sonya and turn on Mandy. So, just for that point, I can see Mandy winning. Um, Carmella in a crowded women's division needs it. Um, Ember Moon is a tough situation. She's she's a great wrestler, she's fantastic, but with a face Becky Lynch's champion, it would be weird. So, running through the process of elimination in my head, I don't think Carmella really needs it to help her stand out. Maybe they continue to do the thing with our truth where, oh, they're, they're good friends and they help each other out and Carmella turns on him at some point and goes back to being heel mellow, which is one of the best Carmellas ever. Um, Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville don't need it. They could just lose a tag team championship match against the Iconics or the Kabuki Warriors. I actually really like that name. Um, or the other women's tag team that I can't think of right now, if there even is one. Riot Squad. Quotes around that. Ember doesn't really need it, to me. So I was left with one choice. And this choice actually evolves into the Sasha Banks stuff from earlier. I'm taking Bailey to win the women's money in the bank. Here's why. So say you look at uh, Bailey's career since losing the Raw Women's Championship. She won the Smack the, the Women's Tag Team Championships. That's about it. Um, you look at more importantly the lack of winning she's done. She hasn't won a lot. She's been on the losing end of most matches because of the fact that they needed to help her build somebody up. Yes, she wanted Evolution because they wanted the four horsewomen to win. And you have to get three out of the four, at least. You got Bailey, Sasha, and Becky. Because Charlotte lost to Becky. So, Bailey wins here to finally start winning again. Start a winning streak. Start some momentum. And say she catches in on Becky at, like, a big thing. My, I would think SummerSlam would be a fantastic chance to cash in. And she... Starts running her mouth how she's the new champ. She's the one who's running the place. She's running the show. She she keeps beating all these names. She beats Amber Moon. She beats Carmella. She beats Mandy. She beats Charlotte Flair. She beats Asuka. She beats Kyrie Sane. Which is most of the SmackDown Women's Division, if not all of it. I can't think. Zelina Vega. Uh, Iconics. That's, that's the SmackDown Women's Division. There you go. I just said them all. So she's like, I've beaten everybody. Nobody can touch me. Sasha Banks returns. Sasha Banks, Bayley, SmackDown Women's Championship, WrestleMania. If you want to win back Sasha Banks, 
that's how you do it. It's it's a long shot, but it's a scenario I saw in my head that would be nice to see. I'm still taking Bailey to win because she needs it the most. Of the eight women in the match, she's gone the longest without a women's championship match in general. Ember Moon, I don't count, kind of, because of the transition from NXT to the main roster, plus she went missing for a couple months, and uh, her injury at the Royal Rumble, which was a shame. Nikki Cross is a dark horse of mine. I would love to see Nikki win. If I had to pick one of the Raw women, though, Natalia is the safe bet, I feel. But but I'm going Bailey. Bailey will be Women's Money in the Bank winner. Which will be very nice to see. I am very excited to see the future they have for Bailey. In her first month on SmackDown, uh, she's looked great in her two matches and her promo uh, against Becky and Charlotte. Which will be very interesting to see where they go. Um, but if one Money in the Bank isn't enough, we got to on Sunday. Very excited for the men's Money in the Bank ladder match. You have Ricochet. You have Finn Balor. Andrade, Ali, Sami Zayn, Randy Orton, Drew McIntyre, and Baron Corbin. I'm excited for seven of these. I'm actually excited to see what Randy Orton's going to do at Money in the Bank. Baron Corbin's just there. He's there. Um, And with, with this field, you have seven guys, like the woman who really need this. Well, not really need it, but in like a story kind of sense, they really needed to get a championship opportunity. The one who doesn't need it is Randy Orton, because he's Randy Orton. He's a 14, I think 14 time world champion. Uh, and the only other person in this match who has won a Money in the Bank is uh, Baron Corbin. And you think about these guys, any of the guys from SmackDown winning would be nice. Sami Zayn winning it would be fantastic. Ricochet winning it. Oh my god, if Ricochet wins money in the bank, imagine he... Imagine Seth Rollins wins a match with sending his title. He's worn out. He lays down on his back near the corner. Then all of a sudden there's just a 6.30. Bam, Ricochet's in shot. Cash in. Pin. Win. Ali winning it would be great. You could get to see Ali versus Kofi. And that would have to turn Ali heel, but I would love to see it. Andrade is continuing his build up the card. He has looked fantastic. Finn Balor is Finn Balor. He's one of the biggest names in pro wrestling as Prince Devitt of Bullet Club and of as Finn Balor in WWE and NXT. He is somebody who has looked fantastic. He's finally won a championship for more than 24 hours or two months. The Intercontinental title. He's looked great. Sami Zayn is one of the best parts of pro wrestling right now. He is a character done right. The best thing about his character is he doesn't want to be there. He is so fun to watch. All that said, I'm taking Drew McIntyre to win Money in the Bank. Here's why. I've read they want the Money in the Bank winner to look like a star. To look like somebody who could be the future, the face of the company in the future. That's Drew McIntyre. He is big. He is strong. He is somebody who looks like a WWE superstar. As a, He looks like a pro wrestler. He's like the stereotypical pro wrestler look. And you look at that and say... How can he not be a world champion someday? He would be the first ever UK world champion in WWE. The only reason I have any hesitation on this pick is Braun Strowman. For those of you that didn't watch Raw last week, Sami Zayn versus Braun Strowman was the main event in a Falls Count Anywhere match. If Sami Zayn won, he would get Braun Strowman's spot in Money in the Bank. It took Sami Zayn, Baron Corbin, and Drew McIntyre To beat Braun Strowman. I'm fearful that Braun Strowman is going to seek some revenge. And we could see an upset win. But it's Drew McIntyre. I I can't pick against Drew McIntyre in this match. It it makes sense. He's been built up for what? A year? Or roughly a year? A little more than a year I think. Yeah a little more than a year. Since being called up from NXT to be teaming with Dolph Ziggler. And now he's in the Money in the Bank match as a solo star. I think Drew McIntyre will be fantastic in this match. He's going to look great. Plus, imagine if he wins. You have a psychopath chasing the Universal title. 
And after every match Seth Rollins has, whether it's tag team, singles, championship or non, he, he's looking around. He's looking to see when is where's Drew. Is Drew cashing in right now? And he's got his head in a swivel. He's looking all around. He feels those goosebumps going up his body. It's not the Usos. It's the paranoia of the psychopath, Drew McIntyre. And the one time he doesn't look around. Say it's like against Braun Strowman at Hell in a Cell for the Universal title. Seth Rollins does the unthinkable. He beats Braun Strowman. Seth's not looking around. He's like, yes, I won. He turns around. Claymore kick right in the face. And Drew McIntyre pins Seth Rollins. Drew McIntyre is your new Universal Champion. That's how you make a star right there. That is a fantastic way to have Drew McIntyre cash in and win. And as, as tempting as it is to go with somebody else, I've got to go with Drew. Drew has been looking too good. It's it's a, it's a tough call, to be fair. Any of the guys with SmackDown could win it. Zayn could win it. Zayn arguably needs it the most. He's been there for four years, roughly, on the main roster. And he has ve- had very few championship opportunities. He had a WWE championship opportunity recently. He could cash in on Kofi and be the one to end Kofi's thing. And then we get Owens versus Zayn for the, uni- for the WWE championship at WrestleMania next year. Which would be very fun to see. Speaking of the WWE Championship, uh, what I think could be the semi-main event, or even the main event, uh, Kofi Kingston versus Kevin Owens. Kofi is defending his WWE Championship for the first time on television, on pay-per-view, or special event, or whatever you want to call it. Um, It's... This is another tough call. This whole pay-per-view is full of tough calls. Kofi just won the title. In maybe the best WrestleMania moment of all time. Kevin Owens is Kevin Owens. He's great. He's fantastic. He just hasn't done a lot. He's had opportunities. He just hasn't won them. I want Owens to win. I want Owens to be WWE champion. But against Kofi? It's it's tough. Especially with the whole story they told where Owens gained their trust and then turned on them. And to be fair, that should have been Big E. If if you're going to break up New Day... Well, put quotes around break up. Big E's the one to do that. And Kevin Owens is just there because they need him to. It's essentially the, the story would have been with Big E, with Kevin Owens as Big E. Kevin Owens probably would have been the next challenger. But they had to rush things up after Big E tore his meniscus. So it, it's made this really hard to pick. I'm taking Kofi simply because I want him to have a longer reign. I don't want him to be a one and done champion. I think I think Kofi's been a good champion so far. And I don't mind him staying in character with New Day. I don't mind him being the happy go lucky pancake guy. I enjoy him as that. And just because you win a championship doesn't mean you should change that. Look at Jack Swagger. Jack Swagger went from a plucky, happy to be here. I'm better than you, guy, before cashing in his money in the bank, to, oh, I'm super serious now. I I wear a suit and speak slowly. And that did not work at all. I try to forget that Jack Swagger every single day of my life, but he's always there. Um, And it's it's something I don't want to see happen to Kofi. I don't want him to lose his title so quickly. I think Kofi retains here. And maybe the second toughest call of the whole card. The toughest call of the whole card is the Universal Championship match. Does Seth Rollins retain or does AJ Styles take the title? I'm taking Seth Rollins, but it's it's got to be a screwy finish. You can't have AJ Styles lose cleanly to, to uh, Seth Rollins and have Seth cleanly beat AJ Styles. Especially because of the next pay per view coming up being the Saudi Arabia one. I've heard they want Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar. I think we see Brock Lesnar in this match, which makes me question if it'll go on last. Do you want to end the pay per view on a question mark note as to what does this mean? What could possibly be happening? That's a way you get people to tune in, but if it's something this obvious, it can't end the show. Which is why I think you could end the show with Becky standing tall again. Can end it with the women's money in the bank with some some new face maybe holding up the briefcase. Can end it with Drew McIntyre and say this this guy is the next future. This guy is our next guy. This is somebody you guys like. Focus on him. Don't focus on Roman Reigns on SmackDown. Focus on Drew McIntyre 
in him with that briefcase. You know he's getting a championship opportunity. He's getting a shot at the title. You don't know when. You don't know where. But it's going to happen. And it's it's very exciting to go into this pay-per-view and not know. This is the most questions I've had on a pay-per-view, pay-per-view not named WrestleMania in a long time. It's going to be a fun event, I think, on Sunday. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. If you ask me most anticipated matchup, I'm going to steer away from Rollins versus Styles because it's probably 95% of people's uh, most anticipated matchups. I would say the Money in the Bank matches, to be fair. And to to an extent, Joe versus Ray. If they could have more than a minute, I am very curious what they could do. Especially if you look at, say, this is the next coming of Joe. This is Joe's opportunity to get up the card and become a main event guy. It's it's going to be a fun show. We have three weeks of fun shows coming up with Money in the Bank, uh, Double or Nothing, and uh, TakeOver Bridgeport. TakeOver 25, TakeOver Connecticut, TakeOver Insert Something Here. I can't wait for TakeOver Moose, though. It's going to be fun. TakeOver Toronto for uh, SummerSlam weekend. But that's all I've got for today. Um, next week, we will have... Another quick update of Best of the Super Juniors. We will have double or nothing predictions. We will have a Money in the Bank a quick recap. Um, what else will we have? Uh, more talk about All Elite Wrestling. More more WWE. Probably a little bit of New Japan, considering Dominion is right around the corner. Actually, we have four weeks of big shows. We have Dominion, I think, if my laptop will load. It did. We have Dominion the Sunday after... Oh my god, so we go Money in the Bank on May 29th. Double or Nothing, May 25th. Take over whatever the hell you want to call it. 25 at Connecticut on June 1st. And Dominion is June 9th. This is going to be a fun month for wrestling fans. I hope you're as excited as I am. This has been the Armchair Arm Dragger Podcast. I've been Ben Hersick. I will see you next week with Double or Nothing Predictions.